Hi guys, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Today I'm going to show you how I set my mountain bike up to prepare for hunting in the fall. See you in a minute. Hey folks, tonight I'm going to show you guys how I use my mountain bike and my cargo trailer to go ahead and get a little bit further out in the woods and get away from some pressured hunting when I go deer hunting this fall. Okay, this cargo trailer that I have right here is just a simple Schwinn cargo trailer. Got it for about $150 a couple years ago. It does have tubes in the tires. Uh, I try to keep those pumped up. Uh, I do not have extra tubes on those, but I've never had any issue with going flat. Watch what will happen this hunting season. I'll have one go flat on me. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you guys is the actual mountain bike itself. Uh, I've got a giant mountain bike, four or five years old. It's black. It's a bonus. I didn't order it that way, but it's nice because it helps it be concealed a little bit more in the woods when I hike to my tree stand. I've got a couple things that are stock on here and a couple things I added. Uh, I do have a bag on here that's got a uh, tube and all the tools that I need to change a tire if I have to. Uh, I've got a water bottle carrier and a water bottle in here. It's always good to have extra water, especially when you're biking in. Uh, I've got a cable lock and I've got a fortress lock here so that I can lock up the bike in the cargo trailer when I head to my tree stand. Uh, this bike's got some shocks on the front, makes it a little bit easier when you're on some logging roads and there's some uh, sticks and rocks and twigs. And the last thing that I really did to change the bike was I put these ATV gun mounts on the bike itself. One thing that I realized after using these a couple of times was when I first put them on, I put them over top of the rubber handles, and over time as I hit bumps, it just began to slide down. So I took an X-Acto knife and I went ahead and I cut the actual end of the rubber handle so that now the ATV mounts are bolted directly onto the metal of the handle and now it's really solid. Uh, even going over some bumps on logging roads, this doesn't tend to loosen up at all right now. So first of all, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna show you what I did. I got a couple of these real small bungee cords that you see right here. And the small bungees just help to hold the bow on there. Last thing I wanna do after all this work is I have my bow fall off all the time and money expended in hunting and getting ready for the season and accidents happen i don't want the ball bow to fall on the ground so i've got those and then these are actual rubber attachments that come with the actual atv gun mount itself and you take a look as soon as i pull those off bow slides off real easy and that way when i'm biking out i don't have to worry about slinging the bow over top of my back or whether it's going to fall or wrapped around my chest. I have it attached here to the bike really solidly and I can focus on keeping my hands on the handlebars and not worrying about my bow falling off. The other nice thing about these gun mounts right here is when I'm not using it, there's just a little pin or a clip that comes out and I can take the gun mount right off and I can store it. Usually I leave these in the uh, back pocket of my pickup truck so that any time that I'm going out with my bike, if I need it, they're always out there during the entire hunting season. So I'm going to go through the cargo trailer with you guys now. Uh, one of the things I did was I camouflaged this cargo trailer. I definitely want it to be a little bit concealed when I leave the bike and the trailer in the woods. When I strap on the sticks and the hang-on stand in my bow and I walk to my tree stand. I don't want to advertise that I have this stuff sitting there but definitely it's a big bonus to have the cargo trailer because it takes this weight that's usually on your back when you're walking out into the woods and it gets it in the trailer itself and it's just a lot easier to bike in. I do have two strap camouflage backpacks that I bring. Here's the actual string backpack that I use to uh, put my camera equipment in one of the bags 
and all my straps and safety harness in the other one. I'll put a link in this uh, to the description below. I think it was like $16, uh, but it's a great bag. It's got a zipper on the front, and uh, I can fit quite a bit of stuff on there. And actually, uh, when I'm walking in, I just simply strap these onto the back of my hang-on tree stand when I'm walking in. One of those backpacks I put all my camera gear in and I tend to keep that one over top of my shoulders. Uh, I want to make sure that stuff's not bouncing around in the back of the trailer. So I put all my real fragile camera gear on that, uh, on that string backpack on my back. The other string backpack that I have has all of my straps for my hang-on stand and my sticks. Uh, it has everything else that I need, uh, including my safety harness. And I just drop that backpack down in here into the bottom of the cargo trailer. goes Wendell. That is the most embarrassing thing ever. There he goes through the neighborhood with a flag. He's so happy. I'm gonna go through now with you guys what I carry in my actual cargo trailer to keep the weight off of my back as I'm biking in. Uh, there's actual uh, small clips on the inside of this that you can go ahead and hook bungee cords up to. I got some bungee cords that have carabiners on them and I keep these in the cart at all times. And uh, when I go ahead and pull those off, they're still attached on these two sides so I don't accidentally lose them in the woods. Uh, first thing I've got in here is my sticks. Uh, I've got some XOP sticks right here and an aider on the bottom of it. Um, probably about 16 or 17 pounds that I have right there that gets off my back and is carried in here. You'll see that I've got a jacket. Whatever jacket I'm wearing that day, uh, maybe a pair of pants if I'm coming in in a different pair of pants, I always put it in between the actual hang-on stand and the sticks so that the metal is not bouncing on each other as we're coming in. And then I've got my lone wolf hang-on stand, which sits in there as well, too. So, really, stuff fits in there pretty good. One other thing that I have, instead of attaching a light to the actual bike itself, I just go ahead and I bring a headlamp, and I wear a headlamp out into the woods in the morning when it's dark, where I wear the headlamp when I'm coming back out in the evening. And it just makes it a lot easier rather than have something else attached to the bike itself. I also want to show you guys how this cargo trailer attaches onto the bike. There's a little clip attached there. I usually wrap it around a couple of times, feed it through here, this pin. And then all that happens real easy, you just pull the pin out and simply the cargo trailer comes off that easy. What I usually do is leave this pin in here when I'm biking without the trailer, so it's always there, and I just leave this mount attached, and then you take a look at it. It's a real simple attachment that keeps this arm out away from the bike tire so it doesn't end up rubbing. get that on there? Yep. Damn. <laughs> Pinch my finger. Well, I'm out here today before season on my mountain bike with my cargo trailer, my bow and all my gear. Just making sure that everything works properly. Definitely excited to get out and do some hunting this fall where I'm a little bit further away from people. See if I can find some unpressured deer. I hope that you guys learned some stuff from this video, a couple things you can take away to help you get out into the woods a bit further when you hunt this fall. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hoping you guys like the videos and please subscribe.
We'll see you soon, guys. <laughs>